Hello everyone. So today we will talk about a special type of speed problem. Recall that last time we discussed some word problem involving speed. And speed is of such importance that it just we have so many real life problems involving speed. And as you can tell, because in America here, we rely right on cars. A lot of cases, we need to calculate or learn how to calculate various uh, speed problems. And today we'll talk about a particular and quite frankly, artificial, because we usually don't encounter them, but it's of importance because it helps us to understand a certain uh, just kind of uh, mathematical problems, how they are actually uh, uh, just constructed in real life, a special type of speed problem. And that involves river and the water. And we'll see what that means. Uh, but the nature of the problem can be easily extended to other situations like a flight. Okay, that, uh, let's have a quicker review on speed problems. So record that, um, as in many other uh, real life problems, we have three variables and they exhibit a multiplicative relationship. So in speed problems, you have speed, the time that will take you will take to finish traveling a certain distance, and finally you have the distance. So the multiplicative relationship is that speed uh, times time will give you distance. Um, conversely, if you know the distance and the time, then speed is just this relationship, distance divided by time, okay? And time will be distance divided by speed. Uh, we didn't specifically discuss this particular notation. Uh, this is actually division written in the form like a fraction, okay? My apology uh, if you did not understand this uh, notation for division because we have not formally discussed anything about division. Also, uh, I assume in grade five, you have already learned the basic uh, meaning of uh, fraction, particularly when we have uh, just this particular like horizontal line, it's really just the division uh, 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 operation. Okay, so this is super important to understand any div, uh, speed related problem, you know, those three formulas. But the important thing is that not try to just memorize those formulas, but understand why we have them. And it's super important to understand that you don't have three formula, you actually just have one relationship. All those three, just a different ways to represent exactly the same relationship. And that is the multiplicative relationship among the three variables. Okay, today we will talk about a class of word problems involving a boat and a river. When I was a student of your age, I really enjoy working on those type problems. They are fantastic. So what do those problems look like? Well, typically the problem just looks like this. Well, imagine you have a river somehow like that, right? Those are the two banks, uh, maybe the north bank and the south bank of the river. Well, you have a boat uh, maybe I should make this 100%. So get rid of this. Um, maybe let me redraw the river. Okay, 
in the river, you have a boat. Let's just say you have a boat. It's not perfect. This is like a bus stop, <laughs> but it's a boat. Okay, so the boat, let's just say this is the upstream of the river, and this is downstream of the river. Well, that means that the water flowing in the water, uh, in the river, in this direction, in the downstream, because the water always flow from the upstream to the downstream, right? So the boat will travel in the river in either directions. Because of the water, if the boat stops moving, what will happen? The water will kind of wash down the boat downstream. So without any, doing anything, the boat will travel just like a river in this direction. And what would be the speed of the boat in that case? The speed will travel at exactly the same speed as the water. So water flows down from upstream to downstream at a certain speed, right? Usually, you don't even see that. What is the speed of water? I really cannot tell. But that's exactly how you actually do how to measure the speed of the water flowing in the river. Let's just say you put a paper boat, you fold a paper boat, just throw it in the river. You observe how fast that the paper boat will travel, and that speed is actually just the water speed. But because the water is so powerful in the river, it doesn't matter whether you have a tiny paper boat or you will have a real boat, they will all about travel at the same speed because the current will be so powerful. It can carry heavy boat or light boat alike just about the same speed. And that speed is just the water speed in the river. Okay, with this understanding, now we have the interesting question. If you have a boat that is either operated by machinery or by manpower, apparently if the boat go upstream and go downstream, it will travel at different speed. Everybody knows that if you move upstream, you will face the current, so you will have to take more effort or more power to drive the boat. It takes more time if you want to travel a certain distance than if you travel downstream, right? If you travel downstream, it will be much easier because now you are actually assisted by the water current. The question is that, how do we know the boat speed either upstream or downstream. This is actually a physics problem, but mathematical model for this physics problem is quite simple. Well, we will have a certain um, simplified re um, relationship. Okay, so if you have a boat that, will, that is traveling upstream in the river, uh, I'm sorry, I, I made a mistake. Actually, uh, I have to correct this slide a little bit. Somehow, uh, got, this is downstream. Uh, downstream. Okay. Downstream. All right. So, um, if you travel in the river, downstream. Now, because your boat will be assisted by the water current, the downstream speed of the boat will be simply the addition of the boat speed plus the water speed. But what do we mean by boat speed? 
Well, boat speed would be just say, imagine you are, the boat is traveling in a river that is flat. In reality, there's no such water, right? So because if the water is still, the water does not flow, then it's not a river. So, but you can imagine that the if the boat is traveling in the lake, which is still, there's no upstream or downstream, that's why it's called lake, there's a speed for the boat. That's the so-called still water speed of the boat. That's what we mean by boat speed, meaning that if the boat travels in still water, whatever speed that is, that's the boat speed. So if the boat travels in the water downstream, then the total speed of the boat would be the still water boat speed plus the water speed. You just imagine what that means. So if the boat does not do anything, the water will just wash it down so the boat will be traveling at the water speed. Now, ignoring that part, or kind of just putting that aside, if the boat travel at its own speed, then the total speed must be the combination of the boat's own speed and the water speed. That's why when we say the boat is traveling downstream, the boat speed would be just simply the sum of the boat speed and the water speed. And it's important to understand by boat speed, we really mean the still water speed of the boat, as if the boat is traveling in the lake. Okay, that's downstream. So with that understanding, it's easy to see if you the boat travels upstream, what will happen? It's just the reverse, right? It must be the boat speed subtracting the water speed because now you are facing the current. You will have to kind of be pushed back a little bit by the water current. So your real speed when you travel upstream would be the boat speed subtracting the water speed. Those two relationships are the key to understand this type of problem, okay? So it's really not that difficult if you can make those adjustment. So when we talk about a boat traveling in the water, we consider not just the boat speed and not consider the normal still water uh, boat speed. We have to incorporate the effect of water. And the water can change the boat speed in two ways. One is upstream, one is downstream. Clearly, downstream speed up the, the boat speed, and upstream is slow down the boat speed. And that's why those two formulas are important. Okay, with this understanding of the physics, of the real problem, we are now in the position to attack various related uh, word problems, okay? So let's consider the first problem. Let's just say a boat travels between two cities, A and B, in the river. And the two cities are 180 miles apart. And city A is upstream relative to city B. So A is always, uh, in our word problem, A is upstream, B is downstream. It takes the boat nine hours to travel from city A to city B. And the water in the river flows at a speed of one mile per hour. So that's relatively a flat river, just the water flows relatively slowly. The question is how much time will the boat take to travel from city B to city A? Notice that make sure that you know which one is upstream. Here A is upstream relative to B. So it takes the boat nine hours to travel from city A to city B. 
What does that mean? Well, it means that we already know the distance between A and B, right? So this statement simply says that we have already given you the distance. Now we are giving you the travel time. It takes about nine hours to go from city A to city B. So therefore we can easily calculate the speed at which the boat travels from A to B. And so that is 180 divided by nine. This is, remember this is in hours, and this is the distance between city A and B. This translates into, what, 20 miles per hour. And this must be the speed, right? But what is this speed? Well, this is the speed for the boat to travel from A to B. And remember, that is downstream because A is upstream relative to B. So when you travel from A to B, the boat is actually traveling downstream. So therefore, we know this is the downstream speed of the boat. But recall that what is the relationship? Downstream speed is really the boat speed plus the water speed. So this is not just the real boat speed. This is the real still water boat speed plus the water speed. But in this case, what is the water speed? It's already given to you the water speed. In this case, just one mile per hour. Oops, oops, that's a typo, not one mile. I will fix that, one mile per hour. So we know we have to subtract this one to get the real boat speed, which is still water speed. So this is 90 miles per hour. This is the still water speed of the boat. But because we need to calculate the time when the boat travels from B to A, which is upstream traveling. In that case, we will have to get the upstream speed. And by the formulas we saw, that will be 19, which is the still water speed, minus 1. So the first minus was 1 was from upstream uh, downstream speed minus the water speed. Now we have to minor it again to get the upstream speed. So the upstream speed is really just 18 miles per hour. Now we are ready to answer the final question, which is how much time will the boat travel uh, take to travel from B to A, which is upstream. So therefore, we have the distance here. Now we have the upstream speed. So now we know the time the boat will have to take to travel from B to A is simply the distance, 180 miles, divided by upstream speed, which is 18 miles per hour. So the answer is 10 hours. So this is a very straightforward word problem it gave you everything as simple as possible. But you still need to understand how this type of problem actually work. That is that we are talking about some composite speed, not just the water speed, but with the impact of the water. And you have to understand the formula and then just make the uh, adjustment, okay? So this is a very straightforward very representative problem for this kind. And uh, um, everything is based on the two formulas we talk about. Of course, the general speed uh, formulas. But you don't memorize them. You just understand how it actually works. Okay? So let's take a look at the next problem. Okay. Again, a boat travels between A and B to cities, and A um, is upstream. But this time we were told that the two cities are 
240 uh, miles apart, just like uh, um, similar to previous one, but we changed the number to 240. And it takes about eight hours to travel from A to B, but 10 hours to travel from B to A. So we know now the downstream takes less time, eight hours to travel, but upstream takes more, 10 hours to travel. The question is, what is speed of the boat in still water? And what is speed of the water flowing in the river? How do we do that? Oh well, we have to understand what is the relationship between three things, the water speed, the boat speed, and the adjusted boat speed. That's exactly what we saw earlier in the two formula, right? Just by looking at those two formula, what kind of conclusion can you make if we don't know the boat speed and we don't know the water speed, but we do know the upstream speed and the downstream speed? What do we know? Well, if you take a closer look at those two formula, you would see it. We essentially, we have two things for equations, right? We have not talked about algebra, but we can borrow the concept term at least here. We have two equations. We want to know what is the boat speed and the water speed, but we do not have them. What we do have them is on the left-hand side of those two equations. We do know the upstream speed and the downstream speed. The challenge is how to get the boat speed and the water speed. What can we do? Well, you have to be very observant. What is the relationship um, on the right-hand side of those two equations. It's just one boat speed adding what speed and the other is boat speed subtracting what speed. Remember the very first type of just word problems? We have two numbers, the large number and the small number. In that case, this is it just like that, right? The multiple, um, just a, you, you know, you have a larger number and a smaller number, and they add up to something, they subtract something. So one is a different one the sum. Therefore, the boat speed simply is if we add the downstream speed and the upstream net divided by two. Right? Because when you do that, you essentially adding everything on the right hand side because they are equal to the right hand uh, left hand side. So if we add downstream speed and upstream speed, we are essentially doing addition on the right hand side as well. That is that boat speed plus water speed plus boat speed, then subtracting water speed. So the two water speed will actually disappear because one is being added and one is being subtracted. So if we do that, we will see if we add everything on the left hand side, the upstream speed plus the downstream speed that is everything on the left hand side must be the same as the boat speed. We just use the boat speed as, well, I'm not trying to be rude, but just abbreviated as uh, B and S. Then plus water speed, water speed, that is right here. Then you plus 
another boat speed, but now subtracting the water speed. And you can see that this is actually canceling out the water speed because you add and um, subtract. Then you can see that this will be two times the boat speed. So the upper stream speed plus the down, downstream speed, they add up twice the boat speed. Therefore, we can derive the relationship. The boat speed must be upstream speed plus the downstream speed, then divided by two. Right? And that's exactly what relationship we need to understand. When we have this type of problem, a boat traveling the river, the real boat speed, what we mean by that is the still water speed of the boat is adding the upstream speed and the downstream speed then divided by two. Or you can also call this is the average because of this divided by two, we are adding two things up then divide the total by two, which we also call this the average of the upstream speed and the downstream speed. So now we know what is the boat speed if we know the upstream speed and downstream speed. But what how about the water speed? Well, we will do something kind of similar, but this time instead of adding the two things up, we will subtract one from the other. So this time we will just do subtracting the smaller number, which is the upstream speed from the downstream speed, which is bigger. So if we do upstream speed, subtracting the downstream speed, what will happen? That's what we do on the left hand side. So what happens on the right hand side would be the boat speed plus the water speed. Remember this is the downstream speed. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. So I wrote it wrong. This should be downstream speed. My apology. Uh, subtracting up speed speed. You always subtract the smaller number from the larger number and upstream speed is always smaller than downstream speed. Of course, that will be slower. So when we do this on the right hand side, we are doing this is the, remember this is the downstream speed. So we are subtracting the upstream speed, which is the boat speed minus the water speed. And now with the arithmetic rule that we learned earlier, when you subtracting something like this, what you will get is we copy down the first part, which is the boat speed plus the water speed. Then when you subtracting this, remember how we learn this kind of arithmetic. This will be subtracting the boat speed at now, because this is negative, or subtracting inside, and with another trap subtraction, this will become addition of water speed. So this time around, we also get a cancellation, but we are canceling out the boat speed, rather than like earlier, we canceling out the water speed, because at that time we were adding the two things up. This time we are subtracting the smaller one from the larger one. But what happened on the right hand side is that by doing that, we cancel out the boat speed. And what remains is water speed plus water speed. So we get two times the water speed this time. So now look at the relationship. On the left hand side, we have downstream speed 
subtracting the upstream speed on the right hand side we get two times the water speed now you can see that how we actually get water speed so water speed is nothing but what we have on the left hand side which is equal to what we have right hand side this means that the water speed will be upstream uh, downstream speed subtracting upstream speed divided by two so this is in contrast with what we just derived earlier about the boat speed which is you add those two speeds up divided by two to get the boat speed but to get the water speed we subtract in the smaller upstream speed from the bigger downstream speed then divided by two so what we just discussed is actually a process solving equations also we did not specifically talk about that but that's exactly what we were actually doing but the point here is that with those two formula we created two additional formula that is the upstream uh, the water uh, the boat speed let's go with boat speed first is we add up the upper stream speed and downstream speed then divide the total by two on the other hand to get the water speed we subtract the upstream speed which is slower from the downstream speed which is faster one is just kind of including a resistant speed one is incorporating uh, acceleration speed both caused by water but when we perform this you can imagine that you actually get two copies of the water speed and that's why we divided this difference by two to obtain the water speed so it's really important to understand how this additional relationship is obtained it's based on what we have here so with that understanding solving the current problem is just straightforward remember now we have is that we know the distance we know the travel time for down, both downstream and upstream traveling and that will give us the downstream speed and the upstream speed right so let's do that so 240 is the distance eight hours is from a to b eight equals 30 miles per hour and that is the faster one which is from a to b downstream speed on the other hand if you divide 240 by 10 we will get 24 miles per hour remember this is a slower one so this is actually the upper stream speed now to get what we were asked to get what is speed of the boat in still water and what is speed of the real of the water flowing in this river well we just discussed that right so clearly the boat speed is to add the downstream speed with the upstream speed divided by two and that is in this case 30 plus 24 54 divided by two that's 27. so the still water speed of the boat is just 27 miles per hour. <laughs> On the other hand, the water speed must be 30 subtracting 24, then divided by two, 2. This is 30 subtracting 24, that's just 6. 6 divided by uh, 2 must give us 3 as the water speed flowing in the river if you are in doubt just put um just plug in this back into our earlier result 27 so if 27 add 
F3, the still water speed of the boat plus the water speed, that should give us a downstream water speed, which is 27 plus 3, that's 30. Yes, that's exactly what we have here. On the other, on the other hand, if we subtract 3 from 27, 27 subtracting 3, that gives us 24. And yes, that would be exactly what we were provided with in the beginning. So this is what we want. The still water speed of the boat is 27, and the water speed is just 3. Okay. So this is, once again, very straightforward problem uh, for this uh, general class of problem. Um, it just gives you um, additional opportunity to understand if we have the downstream and the upstream speed, how can we get the still water speed and the, the, water, uh, the water speed? And that's what we're just doing here, okay? Now, let's have another problem. Okay, Aaron and Albert are kayaking upstream. Look, they are doing upstream the more laborious thing. In American River at six kilometers per hour. Okay, so they are doing, they are moving upstream with their kayak. So that is, the speed is six kilo an hour. But somehow Albert kind of just a very, just not following uh, his parents' uh, advice. He did not wear his life jacket. Albert just apparently believed that he's a good swimmer, but that's dangerous because American River is actually a pretty, just a kind of fast river. So Albert did not wear his life jacket, and he was not just kind of not following the instruction, but also quite careless. He accidentally dropped his life jacket in the river. A life jacket is a pretty expensive. It could easily cost you a couple of hundred dollars. So when he found that out, he did not immediately just find that he lost the, the life jacket in the river. So when he found that out, the life jacket was already two kilometers downstream relative to the kayak. So what happened? So Albert and Aaron immediately turned their small boat around. They want to catch the life jacket because it's expensive, right? You don't want to lose it. So they turned the kayak around in trying to recover the life jacket. And now we are telling you the water in American River flows at two kilometers per hour. Well, that's not super fast. So the water speed is two kilos per hour. Now, the question is how much time will the boys take to recover the life jacket? So what is the essence of this problem? Now the asset problem, this is a just chasing problem, right? Remember we talked about this last time? You have a, just someone that is ahead of you, you want to use a higher speed to chase that guy down. In this case, if you have to draw a picture, oops, it should help you. So you have a river, you have the kayak here. So this is the kayak. And when Albert detected his life jacket was lost, at that moment, the life jacket somehow was already two kilo apart from the kayak. Now the boys turned the small boat around try to chase down the life jacket. So what is this problem? Well, this is the chasing problem we learned last time. So we have to figure out the distance and the speed difference. We know the difference is two kilometers, right? Didn't we? Yes. So when Albert detected this, the life jacket was already 
two kilometers down the street. So we know that. So what is now the speed difference between the life jacket and the kayak? So we know the life jacket was just flowing down. Um, so its speed is just the water speed, which we were also provided with. The water in American River flows at two kilometers per hour. So we know that. But what is the kayak's own speed when in this direction? Well, we recognize that in this direction, it's just really downstream speed. Okay, what is downstream speed then? Well, downstream speed is the water speed plus the still water speed. And how do we know that? Well, look, we know when they travel upstream, they were traveling at six kilometers per hour, right? So that means that this is the upstream speed. So the six is the still water speed subtracting the water speed. But we already know that water speed is two. So six, because this is the difference between the real still water speed and the water speed. Now we are just adding back the water speed to get the still water speed. So this is eight miles per hour. This is the still water speed of the kayak if they say do it in the river or uh, in the lake rather than in the river. So this is the still water speed. Now, but what is the downstream speed then? Of course, this will have to be A plus two. But wait a second. Eventually we have to subtract in because we are talking about the difference between now the downstream movement and the life jacket, we will have to subtract in from this downstream speed, subtracting the water speed. Now you can see when we do this, you add it to, then you subtract in two, they get canceled out. So this is actually simply eight. The reason we get this, if, of course, we first do the still water speed plus the water speed, then subtract the water speed. Why don't we do that? So this is nothing but eight miles per hour, which is the water still water speed we already calculated. So it looks like for this particular problem, we did not have to perform this step. Once we have this, that's all we need. And you are actually absolutely right. So if you understand the nature of the problem, we're trying to get difference between the kayak and the life jacket. But the, the downstream speed is already a sum of the still water speed and the water speed. Now you subtract the water speed. This, the difference must just be the still water speed. So when the kayak turned around, tried to chase down the already drifting away life jacket, the difference is just still water speed. If you understand that, we can actually skip this last step to save you a little bit more time. So that's exactly why you don't want to be a robot to memorize things in the road fashion because you really just need to understand what you are doing. And that means that when they try to chase down, they had the speed advantage of just eight miles per hour relative to the drifting away uh, life jacket. So now we know what we need to do to do how much time there's only one small problem though. We know the distance is two miles per hour, but now their speed difference is eight miles per hour. We don't even know how to do this, do we? We have not even learned fraction yet. Also, I know, I know you probably have learned a little bit by something like this, okay? But what can we do about this? 
Well, because this we are trying to get hours, so we can really think about this. If we know the speed difference is a hour, a miles per hour, how can we somehow avoid having to face this problem 2 divided by a? Yeah, if you know fraction, that would be just one fourth, but we have not no fraction. Can we really still solve this problem? Yeah, you can be a little bit, bit more creative, right? If it's a miles per hour, what does that mean? If we consider the unit is not per hour by something like a minute, or maybe just fraction of an hour. Well, still, we don't know what is a fraction, but we can imagine if you travel eight miles an hour, how much you can travel by half an hour. That must be four miles per half an hour, but half an hour just 30 minutes, right? So the speed can be now translated into, in terms of minutes, every 30 minutes, your still water speed is four hours. And how about we continue to have this time? That would be every 15 minutes, you travel by two hours. Now, this is your new speed. This is a little bit unusual because this is with the understanding now your unit of time is not hour and it's not minutes. It's just 15 minutes. We consider that as the basic unit of your time. We can certainly do that, remember? Unit is all relative. Okay, so in this case, we would say the still water speed of the kayak is just every 15 minutes, you can go two hours. Now with that, we can avoid this division problem two divided by A. We simply say two divided by two. Why? Because now we change the unit of time. The unit of time is now 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, you can travel two miles. So two divided by two, equal to one, but that one is not hour. It's not a minute either, it's 15 minutes. It needs one unit of 15 minutes. So now we understand how much time will the boys take to recover the life jacket? 15 minutes. Well, we did this a little bit at the end in a very artificial way, only to avoid problem that we have to deal with fraction. We have not officially learned fraction. That's why we want to avoid that. So it will take 15 minutes for the boys to catch up on the life jacket. But if you do, if you will recognize that this is nothing but one fourth of an hour, right? Every 15 minutes, just one quarter of an hour. And in fraction terms, that is one fourth of a whole, which is one hour. So if you know fraction, its answer is two divided by eight, that's one fourth, and the unit is hour. So it takes one fourth of an hour to catch the life jacket. But that's exactly what we are doing here. The two must be the same. It will take the boys 15 minutes to recover the life jacket if they're lucky, all right? So now let's work on one more problem. <laughs> Once again, a boat travels between A and B in the river, and the two cities are 240 miles apart and A is upstream. Okay, this time the problem is it's different. It takes about 10 hours to travel from city B to city A. Now we know that's upstream speed. And we even immediately know the upstream in this case is just 24, uh, 240 divided by 10, 10 hours. This is 24 miles per hour, right? So we, we, we don't just, for no reason we do it now, but it seems so easy, why don't we just write it down anyway? And the speed of the boat 
by that we now know this means the still water speed is seven times of the speed of the river. So we did not get what the water speed is or what the boat speed is, but we get a multiple relationship between the two. The, the boat speed is just seven times the water speed. How much time will the boat now travel from A to B? That means the downstream. Yikes. So this sounds a quite difficult problem, but don't worry about it. This is just like what we learned earlier about multiple relationships, right? You have a big number, a smaller number. They have three relationships, the sum, the difference, and the multiple. And this is just part of that, or well, that is part of this. Either way, we have such a sub-problem. We have two speed, the water speed and the, the, the still water speed. And the larger one, the still water speed is seven times of the smaller one. Now we know how to do that part because we already calculated this is the upstream speed, right? Remember, the upstream speed is the sum of the two speeds, still water and the water, uh, still water and the boat. So by using what we learned earlier regarding this type of problem, we know it's just seven plus one. This is the multiple of the total. If this divide, it divides 24, what will we get? we will get the water speed because 24 is the sum of the two and the, the bigger one, the boat speed is seven times of the water speed. So in total, the total multiple is seven plus one in terms of the water speed. So if this divides 24, we will get 24 divided by eight equals three, which is the water speed. Remember, this is our one. We use the water speed as one, and we are getting this one multiple. So this is the water speed. With that, now we know immediately the boat speed is just three times seven equals 21 miles per hour. That is the still water speed. But now, are we almost there? Sure. We just need to know how much time the boat will take to travel from city A to B, that's downstream. Downstream is just sum of the water speed and the boat speed, but we already know both. So, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, looks like a, uh, Yeah, uh, that is correct. This is downstream. So the downstream speed now, um, is 24. Uh, sorry, I, I think I made a typo here. I reversed the relationship. The 10 hours is supposed to be from A to B. That was a typo. I apologize for that. Although we can work out this problem the same way, but this should not be, if this is downstream, uh, if this is from B to A, the multiple is reversed. So it's seven minus one. So uh, earlier, yes, my apology. So this is from B to A. B to A is upstream. Right, upstream, yes. So upstream is the difference. Uh, look, hold on. It takes, it actually doesn't really matter. It takes about 10 hours to travel from B to A, and the B to A is the upstream speed. The upstream speed is the difference. So that's right. So 
it will have to be if with this problem the uh this not be uh a this will be six sorry so this will be four my apology let, let me recap this the mistake was that i read the problem wrong from b to a that's the upstream so this also illustrates why you need to be very careful. So uh, B to A is upstream, and the upstream speed is 24. That's right. But upstream is the difference between um, the, the, um, the boat speed and the water speed. So that should be 7 minus 1 rather than add 1. So that would be 7 minus 1. That's the difference. Remember, the sum, difference, and multiple relationship. So this will be six. So this will be four miles per hour. That's the water speed. So now the still water speed would be four times seven, and that's 28. Okay, so we know now the, water, uh, the, the still water speed of the boat is 28 miles per hour. Now for the downstream, speed would be 28 plus 4 equals to 32 miles per hour. That is the downstream speed. So now I got it correct. Sorry about that. And then you also illustrate when you talk about something for a long time, your brain kind of just malfunctioned once in a while. So this is the downstream speed. Okay. So now, how much time will the boat take to travel from A to B? Now we are talking about downstream time. So this will be 200, 240, which is the distance between the two cities, divided by this speed, 32. Well, we will have once again a problem we just saw earlier that is without knowing fraction we actually won't be able to get an integer number of this but what we will be able to do is just to use the division with remainder so if we do this what will we get if we divide 32 uh, 240 by 32, we won't be able to get an integer quotient, right? We get a partial one. So we get 7, that is 14, 1, 2. So we got a remainder, which is 16. So we first get 7 hours. Then we still have a residual 16 miles. That needs to be divided by 32. But now we know that 16 divided 32. With the technique we just saw, we know this is 30 minutes. You will have to turn this into 16, which is 16 miles every 30 minutes, essentially. We are trying to avoid the fraction problem. But what happened here is that you are essentially dividing 16 by 32, that would be one half, that is 30 minutes. If you want to use fraction, that's perfectly fine. And you can get that directly. This is seven and one half. But assuming we don't know the fraction, you have to do a little bit just tuning. So in order to divide 32 miles per hour, you can divide that by 16, but that unit has to be mile per 30 minutes, not per hour. So if that's the case, 16 by 16 is just one, and one is 30 minutes. So put the row things together, the answer is, it will take seven hours and 30 minutes for this boat to travel from A to B. 
Okay, so we, in this problem, we see that it's becoming a little bit more complicated because we don't have a, um, directly like what we just saw in the early problem. Along the way, we have to solve a sub-problem that involves another type of problem, murder problem we saw earlier. That is when you have two numbers, large number, small number, the sum, the difference, and the multiple relationship. And now you see how what we learned earlier can be used in the later problem, right? In this case, we not just need to solve a word problem, which is itself a special word problem involving uh, adjustment of the speed by the water speed. We also need to solve that multiple problem because we were not told directly with the boat speed was still water speed, but we know a multiple relationship between the two. The boat speed is seven times of the water speed. We need to solve that sub-problem first along the way in order to get our final answer, which is seven hours and 30 minutes. And finally, because we want to avoid using fraction, we have to do a little bit trick. So we still get the same result, but we don't stay, say, you get seven and a half hours. We say we get seven hours and 30 minutes. Okay, now let's consider another type of question. Well, it's not a word problem, but it's still of the same nature. Let's just say we have a river. Okay, to make this a little bit simple, we think about the river, the two banks are two straight lines and parallel This is not a word problem for you, but for you to think about, to understand. Because once in a while, if you go say, math competition, I believe in one of the AMC, recent AMC 10 math competition, you have this type problem. Let's just say you have a person Okay, and he's a good swimmer. He wants to swim to the target. Let's just say there's a lighthouse here, lighthouse here, on the other side of the river. And the river, of course, is the water is moving this way. This is downstream. This swimmer want to swim toward this lighthouse crossing the river in this direction, right? So what will he do? If you start at the beginning, you take a look, this is your target, you figure that you have to swim this way straight, and you swim that way, will this guy actually get to the lighthouse? The answer is no, because when if this guy does not do anything, just swim that way in that direction, every step of the way, he will be flushed down to the downstream of the river by the water, right? So his actual trajectory or path will be something like this. When he finally reach the other side of the river, he will not be at the night house. He will be actually at the point that is still away from the night house because initially he takes this direction. Then after that, maybe he will not look at the lighthouse, will not make any judgment. He just tried to swim straight. But his movement will be constantly just kind of shifted by the water at a certain speed. So ultimately, when he get to the remote side bank, the other side, the opposite bank, his actual movement will not be this straight line. Instead, he will get something like this. So how do we know exactly what is this? Well, this involves some geometry, actually, both physics and geometry. I'm not trying to ask you to solve this problem, but just give you a perspective of what you will learn. So just imagine 
you have nothing to do with this adjustment. Imagine you are still doing a straight. If the water is still, it's not a river, this is a kind of just a lake, still water, then he will get to this lighthouse. The effect of water though, water constantly moving him downstream. So within this much time, when he reached the remote side, the water will flush down by a distance, something like that. That's just marked as a blue um, direction. So this is the amount of distance that the water will flush him down during that time when he swim from one bank to the other side. So the net effect of this water movement along with his original or imaginary still water movement will generate a new actual movement like that. And this movement is actually, if we draw a parallel scene along with this one, we get a parallelogram. And this actual movement it's just a diagonal of this parallelogram. Okay? This involves both physics and geometry. That's why this is a fabulous real life problem. I know you may not fully understand what I'm talking about, but just imagine this is what you will study ahead in the near future. It's fantastic. And it did appear in the recent AMC 10 means for junior high school math competition, but this was not spelled out. This was assumed the student understand both the physics and the geometry of problem of this nature. So just imagine if you swim against the current, but not in a straightforward this upstream direction, but the cross river direction, your actual movement will be adjusted by the water. And the net effect is in this way. If you originally aim at this lighthouse direction, at the end you will get here, and this is the diagonal of this parallelogram. Okay, that's what we have today. So, this type of problem is very interesting and it can be adapted to other situations. Let's just say there's an airplane traveling in the air and you have headwinds, right? That's exactly the same situation here, just like a water flow. The plane has a normal speed or nominal speed, but that speed may be actually adjusted by the, the huge air current, which is the wind. The wind will blow the flow, uh, airplane backward at a certain speed. Okay, uh, I will see you on Friday. Bye.